This is my hand crank generator. It can power a bright LED array, run a radio, or even start a fire. Let's have a look inside. Turning the crank turns this 60 tooth pulley, which drives a 20 tooth pulley on the shaft of a stepper motor. The stepper motor outputs alternating current with two sets of coils, which are turned to DC with these two bridge rectifiers and then used to charge a bank of supercapacitors. The supercapacitors can then power this LED array or an external load that can be switched on and off. It also has three LEDs here to indicate the voltage level. Here's the design showing an exploded view of all the parts. I've included a link to all the STL files in the description if you want to build it. I start by installing the stepper motor into the electronics box, and then I add the belt and pulley. The box has a detent for the pulley shaft to rest in. Once that's in, the faceplate is installed over it and screwed in place. The set screws are tightened down and I do a quick test. Everything runs smoothly. That's really the only moving part in this build, so I can focus on the electronics now. I'm going to install these banana jacks on the side of the box, which will allow me to connect an external load to the capacitors. I'll use this switch to turn power on and off to the load. Next, I'll put in a switch for the main LEDs. The main light has 12 white LEDs in parallel with 100 ohm resistors to stabilize them. They're press fit into the box. I didn't bother to make a board for the LEDs. I just soldered them together with the leads kind of free floating. There's three more LEDs to install, but these are gonna be for indicating the voltage of the capacitor bank. Colored LEDs seem to have a threshold voltage that's inversely proportional to their wavelength, so red turns on first and blue turns on last and so forth. I found that this was a really useful way to indicate voltage as I was charging up my capacitors without the need for a complicated display with an IC chip. After doing a little measuring on my power supply, I printed this fancy placard to go on my indicator lights. Okay, now I need to power this thing, so I printed a crank that installs onto my pulley shaft. Threaded holes won't hold on PLA, so I use a captive steel nut inside the crank to tighten my set screw against. Let's see what the output looks like on the oscilloscope when I turn the crank. Here's the voltage across one of the coils. As I speed up the cranking, the AC frequency increases, but the peak voltage also increases. I can produce 10 to 15 volts open circuit pretty easily, and almost 20 if I crank really fast. Now I need a rectifier so I can turn the AC into DC and charge my capacitors. A stepper motor has two coils, so I'm actually going to connect two bridge rectifiers to it. I could arrange these in series to get more voltage, but I'm aiming for around 5 volts and I already get more than 10 volts off a single coil, so I'm going to arrange the rectifiers in parallel instead. Here's the board I made to do that. It has two salvage bridge rectifiers and a 4-pin header to connect the stepper motor. I'm going to hook that up and then have another look on my oscilloscope. Now the voltage is always above zero because it's been rectified to DC and I get over 20 volts open circuit pretty easily. The reason you see such a thick line is because there's actually an AC ripple superimposed on top of the DC voltage. That won't be there once the big capacitors get connected to the circuit. And here's the capacitors. These are 2.7 volt 470 farad supercapacitors, which I'm going to wire in series to allow me to hold 5.4 volts. I definitely had way too much capacitance on this thing. It took me about 20 minutes of cranking to get to 5 volts. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I also built a cover with a handle. This will help to hold the generator while I'm cranking it. I calculated that at 5 volts the cap bank had about 2900 joules of energy stored in it, meaning that for a 20 minute charge time I was putting in an average of about 2.5 watts. Not much, but then again it didn't take much effort to crank. The LED array was a lot brighter than I expected, and it definitely had no problem lighting up a dark space. It had no problem getting a chunk of nichrome wire white hot. Let's see if it'll start a fire. Works perfectly. This could really come in handy in a survival situation. It's certainly easier than trying to rub sticks together. I still had about 3.9 volts left on my capacitor bank after igniting the paper, so there's plenty of juice left to keep running the LEDs. I can also melt solder almost instantly. 
or make aluminum wire red hot. Pyro experiments are fun, but let's see how long the main light will stay on after a full charge. I went to bed before the lights went out, but they were still plenty bright after two hours. For about 20 minutes of cranking, that's pretty impressive. But I don't think it's practical to spend that much time charging, so I'm going to swap out my huge super caps for some smaller ones. I got a 10 pack of 3.3 farad super caps, which is about 30 times smaller than my original cap bank, so it should fully charge in under a minute. Much easier now. It takes between 130 and 150 turns on the crank to charge the smaller capacitor bank, which can be done in under a minute if I'm quick. The new cap bank only holds 120 joules of energy fully charged, but I was pretty surprised to find how long that ended up lasting me, as you'll see in a minute. I do need to take a little detour first though. I showed earlier that the maximum voltage the stepper motor can produce is quite a bit higher than the max voltage on my capacitor bank. A full charge is 5.4 volts, but the stepper can charge it over 20 if I keep cranking, and that can damage or destroy the capacitors. I'll need to add some sort of circuit to protect them from over voltage. I originally tried a large Zener diode that kicked in at about 5.3 volts, but I didn't like the turn on profile of the diode because it'll start conducting a little bit within around 0.1 or 0.2 volts of its Zener voltage, which causes me to lose a chunk of my energy storage. What I'd like to see is no conduction whatsoever until the protection voltage is reached, which would look like this on a current versus voltage graph. With the Zener diode though, I'm getting a little bit of lead up current before the protection voltage, and that lead up region represents wasted energy. To get the result from the first graph, I built a circuit that uses a comparator to turn on a MOSFET when the threshold voltage is reached. A reference voltage for the comparator of about 1.9 volts is established using the forward voltage of these diodes. A Zener diode would be better for this application, but I didn't have one that operated at a low enough voltage. The other input of the comparator is provided by a resistor divider, which is fine-tuned with a trim potentiometer. I adjust the trimmer to make the comparator trip at about 5.3 volts. When the comparator trips, it turns on this MOSFET, which short circuits the capacitor bank, preventing it from over voltage. Here's what the circuit board looks like. Let's do a quick test with the circuit hooked up to my power supply. As I slowly dial up the voltage, there's no current, but when I hit the trip threshold at about 5.3 volts, it short circuits. For a more detailed test, I'm going to hook up the circuit through a capacitor bank and a 10 ohm charging resistor and provide it with an input voltage that's over its limit. 7.5 volts should be fine for this test. Let's look at the scope. The lower dashed line is 0 volts, and the upper dashed line is the capacitor bank limit of 5.4 volts. In purple is the supply voltage at 7.5 volts. In yellow is the capacitor bank voltage. The capacitor bank charges up and momentarily hits 5.4 volts, and then the protection circuit kicks in and keeps it at 5.3. Once I got the protection circuit working, I printed a little enclosure for it and wired it into the generator. Okay, so let's see how long the smaller cap bank will keep the lights on when it's fully charged. The voltage falls pretty fast at first because the supply is way above the threshold voltage of the LEDs but then the drop slows down quite a bit as the lights draw exponentially less power. I managed to keep the lights on for about 8 minutes, with just under a minute of cranking. I think this time could be extended a little more if I used a regulator to maintain a constant current, but overall it still exceeded my expectations by quite a bit. For last test I hooked up this little alarm clock that has an FM radio in it. It's meant to run at 5 volts, but I found it could work reliably as low as 3 volts. At a full charge, the generator will run the radio for about 4 minutes. I was super happy with the way this project turned out. Not only was it an interesting toy, but with the ability to generate light, start a fire, or run a radio, it could have legitimate use in a survival situation. Stepper motors are definitely the go-to source for small, low-speed generators. If you're thinking of building something like a wind turbine, water wheel, or just a hand crank generator like I did, I definitely recommend using steppers over the typical DC motors. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.